Let's talk about other uh, keratitises or in inflammations or infections of the cornea. So another one that you might come across is uh, a herpes simplex or a herpetic lesion of the cornea. And this patient's also going to come in with a diffuse red eye. And they're going to have moderate to severe pain. They're going to have sensitivity to light all because the, the cornea is inflamed. They're going to have reduced vision, probably a really watery eye, not so mucousy. And now, if we talk a little bit about the pain, some of these patients can be in a lot of pain, but some of them actually may not be because there can be a, an anesthetic effect of uh, a herpetic lesion. And one of the, there is actually a test that you can do if you're suspicious that it might be a herpetic lesion, you see a lesion, you can do a, a cotton wisp test. You take a, a cotton swab and you kind of make it really fine and then you just kind of brush it on the surface of the cornea of that one eye and see how, this is without anesthetic, and see how much the patient notices that and then do it on the other <laughs> eye and see what their comparative response is. But be careful, don't use the same cotton swab because if it is herpetic, you don't want to spread it. Um, it's a test, I, I think I've done it once in my life, so. I don't know if you've ever done it. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't rely on that. But the classic uh, appearance is this dendritic corneal lesion. And this is oftentimes when the optometrist and ophthalmologist were getting at our cell phones because it looks really pretty. Um, I don't know if the, the patients are often a little annoyed with us, but these, uh, they, they look pretty fancy. But it also can be a great, great masquerader. So this is actually a patient that I had, and these are both herpetic corneal lesions where I got out my cell phone and took a photo. So you'll see on the left-hand one, there is a start of a, a dendritic lesion there. But you'll see on the right-hand side, that is also a, a herpetic lesion. You can maybe get hints that there's a dendrite there, but not really. That could just be an abrasion or a scratch. So if you have a situation where someone has a lesion that looks kind of weird, but they have no history of having any trauma, then think in your mind, could this possibly be a herpetic lesion? So what are you going to do if it is? If you see this, what do you want to do? No steroids. Uh, steroids are the big, this is the, the number one reason why steroids are contraindicated in most epithelial defects is because you're worried that it might possibly be a herpetic lesion and you can make it much, much worse and make things go down really, really I fast. Yeah. So... The treatment for this is oral antivirals, and they work fantastic to resolve and treat these conditions, as long as you don't put a steroid on it. So let's talk about topical steroid use and the vision it has the risk. So why, I need, why do you need to be careful about using topical steroids for in the eyes? Number one, it can accelerate any viral keratitis, which can progress to vision loss very, very quickly. It can increase the pressure in the eye and cause the risk for glaucoma vision loss. It can mask symptoms, so if they have some type of situation, it's gonna cover it up. Now, oftentimes, if we know it's not uh, a problem, we will use it to deal with their symptoms, but if you're otherwise if you're using it, it might cover up symptoms that you need to know about. It, if using it chronically can increase the risk for developing cataracts younger, and it can definitely delay wound healing. So you're gonna be careful about using topical steroids. So let's talk about pressure about 30% of the population are what we call steroid responders. That means if you put a topical steroid on their eye, their pressure goes up. And this can happen with topical steroids. It can happen with periocular steroids like creams and ointments that you're applying to your lids that melt and, and you know, leach into the eye. It can also happen with intravitreal injections. Uh, they can all increase the pressure. And the normal range of pressure in the eye is between 11 and 21. That's a normal bell curve distri distribution. And steroid pressure, steroid responders, their pressure can go up by 10 to 20 millimeters. And it can start to do that within a couple of days. And if someone, you know, has a pressure in the 30s for a few days, you can, that can result in vision loss. You got to be very careful. Dexamethasone and prednisolone are the, the biggest problem. So if you're putting them on a topical steroid, make sure you're monitoring their pressure in some form 